Hi there. Well, you might be wondering what happened to me. Uh, I got one message from a, a subscriber. Thank you so much. I'm not dead. I did not die on Mars. Uh, there's times I feel that way. Um, let's see where we leave off. Uh, I did a kind of a blitzkrieg of videos, if you recall, about a week and a half, almost two weeks ago now, where I was going over kind of the, the challenges that we have, and I was asking for help, and I got some really great responses. It took me a while uh, to really read through all the comments and all the suggestions and uh, come up with a game plan. So I'm happy to report I have come up with a game plan, and I'm actually going to do a video where I really lay everything out in detail. I'm going to show you some of the math and everything that I've been working on uh, and go over uh, everything, basically. We're, we're really going to get into it again here. But it's taken everything I have, um, every moment that I have, uh, and then some, some very late nights to do all the calculations and to do a whole bunch of research to figure out what the solution space is for all these different problems. So what are they? Uh, I got my notes over here. Sorry, I'm going to kind of look away. Uh, while we talk, but uh, the first kind of major challenge that we're thinking about is heating. Uh, because we have this November 11th deadline, uh, if you're just new, then uh, the November 11th deadline is when the snow comes and we can't do anything at all anymore. That's when everything stops. No more shipments, no more deliveries, no more construction. There'll be snow on the ground. It'll be cold. And we're in survival mode. Hopefully not this year, but last year we were definitely in survival mode. I uh, encourage you to go check those videos out if you want a good laugh. Uh, so heating, we have to look at insulation, right? We really need to insulate the building. So I started really digging into heating and insulation, and that also we needed to consider microgreen processing uh, because we need to be able to increase our capacity uh, for growing microgreens to help fund uh, the research and development we want to do. And in in order to increase our capacity, we have to increase our um, processing capabilities as well. We have to increase our efficiency by 97% uh, is what uh, I, I put out there for the last video where we talked about that in the Help Wanted series. So uh, talking about microgreen processing tied back to insulation and heating because there's a decision that we had to make in there regarding, okay, well, do we want to do microgreen processing inside of the building? Uh, or do we want to do it outside of the building, like in another structure, like a connex that was suggested by uh, many subscribers, or an external building, like a little, uh, you know, temporary building you could buy at Home Depot, a little shed type of thing. So we went through and did the math there and looked at how many square feet we need uh, to be able to do the processing. I'm going to share these numbers with you uh, in future videos. We'll get into details, but just kind of get you caught up. Uh, and we realized we kind of need a fairly long space. Uh, to, to really do all this, almost 60 feet long uh, when we're at full capacity uh, of this building. So uh, that really led us to, well, we can do connexes and stuff. We looked up the price, and each connex was $3,500 uh, delivered to us. So that's just probably not going to work. And then you still had to insulate them and heat them. So you, you end up kind of, I don't, it, this will come out sounding rude, but it's not, but it's kind of kicking the can, right? I mean, we'd be saying we don't want to insulate this building, so let's go put the processing into a connex. But then we still have to insulate that building as well and come up with a heating solution. So um, we weren't done, though, on the connex because it's a really good idea. So we went back to the heating solution, and the insul that led to the insulation problem. Um, and the insulation challenge, we had a lot of great suggestions regarding, okay, you know, for each of these grow lanes, do we suck the insulation down really tight or do for each lane and, and heat each lane individually, which is the probably the most efficient solution? Uh, or do we cover two lanes together? If you cover two lanes together uh, and you do your microgreen processing in the building, then essentially you're, you're basically insulating the entire building. Uh, so... That led us to having to make a decision of, do we want to insulate this building uh, completely? Uh, which that led us to the decision of, well, what's the purpose of this building? And we spent a lot of time talking about, you know, we are doing this. This is a prototype. We're trying to figure out how to get 
uh, to our, our full scale, or our second prototype, excuse me, we're trying to learn all the lessons for the aquaponics, the digester, and microgreens is purely secondary. But microgreens pays for the work that we need to do, and the bottom line is that, you know, we need a lot of money to be able to pay for this. So uh, are we making microgreens a high enough priority, or are we just treating it kind of, you know, secondary? And the, the, the answer was we were treating it secondary. So we made the solution. Uh, sorry, we made the decision that part of the solution is going to be the HAB1 is going to be converted into 100% microgreens throughout the entire thing. This will help reduce uh, some of the construction costs. Uh, we don't have to have such complex solutions to be able to get all the microgreens onto one side of the building. We can use the entire thing. It'll also give us more capacity in the future so we can expand some uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, be able to really pay for all the R&D that we need to do here for HAB2. We thought about it for quite some time, like I was saying, and we wanted to, you know, are we giving up on what we're doing uh, is a question, or are we evolving to meet the conditions on the ground? And, and I really believe it's the second, uh, the latter statement is um, we have learned a lot, so much, so much regarding aquaponics, regarding fish, uh, regarding the digester, the electricity, the solar power, our needs, insulation, heating. I mean, it doesn't matter if we're doing aquaponics or normal plants. I'm sorry, uh, microgreens or normal plants. Uh, we are still learning a whole lot from this system. And we know enough now to really start being really super dangerous. Um, anyway, longer story shorter, uh, we've decided to turn HAB1 into a microgreen building. And that's going to come with quite a few decisions that fall through that whole thing. So. The first decision is that microgreen processing will be done in this building and this building alone. We will not expand it to the second prototype. So the second prototype will be purely uh, the G11 concept, trying to get sustainable food and energy to local communities around the world. That's what HAB2 will be, but we've got to get to HAB2 first before we can do that, which means we've got to get these microgreens going. Therefore, uh, HAB1 will be converted completely to a microgreen building. Hopefully that made sense. If you've been following along, and you've been part of the discussions and the trades that we've been discussing. I think that will make quite a bit of sense to you. If you that doesn't, go back and watch the Help Wanted series, and this will make a lot more sense. So let's go on to the next thing. Um, in order to do microgreen processing and to increase our cap uh, capacity, we need to create those custom shelves, right? And the idea that we talked about is the rotating shelves. Again, you can go back to the Help Wanted series and, and see those videos where we talk about those in detail. Um, the the challenge with the moving shelves actually isn't electricity. It's the fabrication and uh, the complexity of it, uh, as well as reduced uh, microgreen growing footprint is what the math comes out to say significantly, uh, almost 50 percent less. So um, that's a big deal. 50 uh, percent. Uh, that's slight. I think it's going to be in between 50 and 25 percent less. Sorry, I'm going from memory, and I should just never do math in public. It's just a bad idea. Lesson learned for all you kids out there. Don't do math in public. <laughs> Unless you're good at it. Um, better said, get good at math so you can do math in public and you don't look like an idiot like me right now. Um, okay, so uh, I really am kind of leaning away from the rotating shells and just going with flat shells. And we've reached out to some suppliers, and we're trying to find... Uh, lighter duty shelving so we don't actually have to fabricate custom shelves ourselves um, but we can just buy it and install it which will reduce the amount of time it takes and help us get to that November 11th deadline with the microgreens but that creates another problem uh, it's like whack-a-mole you know you get one you whack it down and then another one pops up and you have to whack it down and another one pops up and you whack it down anyway the next problem becomes lighting and water uh, delivery to the microgreen shelves. Uh, if you do a rotating system, then you can have a stationary point like this, uh, don't point at you, and you can have the microgreens rotate through it. Now, based on the math, it looks like this concept will work. Uh, you have to slow it way down. I think it's like half a revolution per hour. Uh, so it's going really, really slow. And you will get enough light over time on the microgreens throughout the course of a 24-hour day. Um, but you do have significantly reduced um, microgreen, or, um, microgreen growing area, excuse me. 
uh, and it still takes quite a few lights to do the job on the order of about 33 amps per lane. Uh, and that's looking at LED lights. And I reached out to quite a few different suppliers, uh, U.S., China, everywhere. And, um, you know, power is power in the end. So that's a challenge. Um, the stationary shelves, which is where I'm leaning towards, they require even more power. So we're really in a quagmire. Uh, we can reduce capacity, uh, add complexity, and go with rotating shelves and still meet our goals, but it won't be as good. Uh, or we can go with flat shelves, which gives us a significant increase in capacity, but requires a lot more power uh, on the order of 100 amps if you're running lights every day uh, on each of the beds on each lane. Um, that's 100 amps per lane, by the way. That's a lot. That's 400 amps for the entire building. So that led us to the next thing, which is can we free up more power? Even at 100 amps, it doesn't even matter. But uh, with the 40 amps that we have, can we free up power? And if you recall, we talked about pumps and we talked about um, just rewiring the building. So uh, in looking at pumps, uh, went back, did all the math figured with what we've learned you know, I think this is put up by quite a few different subscribers. The pumps we have are way overkill. They're taking almost 12 amps uh, per lane, uh, and they're, they have significantly more pumping power than what we actually need. So uh, we've decided to go ahead and change those pumps out with significantly smaller, smaller pumps. Those pumps have been ordered, and they're going to be here. We'll do, again, all this stuff that I'm talking about in this video. I wanted to get this out. It's been a while. But I'm just kind of giving you insights into all the work that we've been doing. There's been lots of analysis, lots of work, lots of research, lots of finding suppliers in the last two weeks. And that's just been taking all my time. Uh, in fact, when I'm done with this video, I'll be even putting more time in that same stuff. So we're not done yet. Anyway, uh, so the pumps are out. Whew. That's going to save significant amount of power. We're going to go from 12 amps per lane for pumps. We're going to go down to three separate pumps. Uh, one pump for microgreen spraying, one pump for the current for the fish, and one pump for uh, moving water to the aquaponic beds. We'll be able to use the exact same automation that we have and the same PEX piping that we have. We just have to replace the pump that we currently have and put in uh, the new pumps that we're going to be going with. And even with three pumps, um, they're all magnetic drives. They're going to last a long time. Uh, reports on the ones that I bought, they They've run continuously for five years with no problems in a, in a fish pond. So it should be fine. We'll, we'll find out. Um, and instead of 12 amps, we're going to be down to less than three. So thank you, everybody, for challenging me to go back and do that work again. It is going to pay off. And we're going to see a significant reduction in immediately in power consumption. But uh, in order to increase our capacity to meet our financial goals, uh, we're going to have to consume way more electricity than what we have. So uh, back to the board here. Got pumps, more electricity. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's about it. So uh, insulation. Oh, heating. Okay, so insulation. It looks like the leading candidate right now is to put the double wall plastic up inside of the building. Uh, so now the big challenge becomes finding a supplier that can supply a sheet of plastic that's roughly 100 feet long by 100 feet wide. And right now that's tough. It looks like most of them max out about 40 feet by 100. Uh, I haven't found the 100 by 100 yet, which means there's a potential that we might have to weld uh, plastic together. And uh, I'm not excited about that. Uh, we'll also have to mount this up into the greenhouse. And I found some solutions today where they make C-clamps that will clamp around and hold the plastic in place. Um, so I think that'll work. Uh, the ends of the building will be very challenging to uh, secure and put double wall in. Double wall, by the way, is two sheets of plastic with air going through it to create an air dead space. Uh, so the ends of our building are not airtight. Therefore, we can't just put plastic. If the end of the building is like this, we can't just put plastic up on the inside because the air will just blow out the ends. You won't get a dead space. So we're going to have to probably triple it up on the ends in order to create that dead space. But that uh, relatively easy problem compared to the lighting challenge. So, um, I've yeah, insulation. Oh, heating. Okay, heating. Uh, the leading candidates right now is a hybrid solution 
of active and passive heating. The uh, leading candidate for passive is geothermal heat tubes. Um, the leading solution for active is propane uh, burners, uh, just traditional, non-fancy, good old greenhouse propane burners. Drop a propane tank out there, uh, plug in the propane. I was against it last winter, but based on what we have going on and what we learned regarding diesel heaters, uh, the soot that's created, uh, you know, there's a reason why people do it the way they do. Um, so I th those are leading candidates, but that trade's not done yet, so I'm still open to ideas there. Uh, but those are the leading candidates based on everything uh, that I've been doing so far. Numbers still work out with that. So uh, let's, I think that's about it. Lots and lots of math, lots of research, uh, trying to figure this all out. Lots of pieces of scratch paper all around here, uh, trying to get this whole thing figured out. Uh, it's been quite a challenge, but a good one. Uh, <laughs> that's a really good one. I got some interesting experiments we're going to do regarding lighting. Uh, anyone that has a greenhouse uh, with indoor growing, you know that the largest cost that you have is your lighting, and we are no different. Uh, with the single decks that we have right now, uh, the microgreens grow without any uh, external lighting during the summertime. They're growing really well. Um, but in the winter, we will need to have our lights. When we put multiple shelves in, if we go flat, then we'll create a whole bunch of shadow effects for the, the beds below the top ones. Uh, and we will need to do some lighting solution there. I got some interesting ideas. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to know if anybody else out there has your ideas. LEDs are the most cost efficient, uh, active lighting solution that we can find. I'll emphasize active and maybe tip my hand a little bit. But uh, I got some parts coming. Uh, that are going to be fun to experiment with, and I'm excited to share those experiments with you. Let's see if you guys can guess what they are. I think that's about it for this update. Uh, Alicia and I, Mrs. Marsh and I, we're really tired right now. It's been a kind of a slog going through this ever since I put that Help Wanted series up. You know, I've been sitting here trying to figure out these problems. Uh, micro, oh, sorry, microgreen processing. We got a majority of it figured out. And what we've done, uh, Mrs. Martian has written down her process and is systematically going through and finding every step that she takes, timing it, and figuring out how long it takes her to do that. And we are coming up with solutions to get all the big ones that take the longest amount of time. We're going to get those taken care of, uh, and then we'll start talking about some more con um, constructive solutions. But uh, got a lot of parts, lots of ordering, lots of buying stuff. Uh, has occurred in the last two weeks, and it's all starting to show up. Um, yeah, so lots lots going on there. Uh, okay, that really is it. Hey, everyone, sorry it's taking me so long to get this video up, and I, I know this is, like, the least fancy video I've done, uh, just sitting here and talking to you like this, but uh, it's all I had time for today, so I hope you can forgive me for not making a great production out of it. Um, going to have some more coming up. It's going to take me a little while to put them all together, but a lot of stuff is showing up. And we'll get that out to you and got some cool experiments and you're going to see those happening. So that's what I got for you now. Hope you all have a great evening. In the meantime, this is Real Martian. Out.